Well, hello, my name is Mark Johnston and I do STEM education. Today's video is going to cover the shape tracer. This is part three. If you haven't seen the first two, please go ahead and check the description below. Uh, they will provide useful information for this video as well. And today we're going to cover some unique shapes. So let's get into it. All right, so here we are on VEX VR or VR.VEX.com. And I already have the playground open with the shape tracer. And let me just show you which shapes we're going to be doing today. These bottom three, we're going to do start with this plus symbol right here. I guess we're, it's like Switzerland or something. But go ahead and push play. Just like that. Takes a little bit of time because of all those turns. I'm going to go ahead and click this location tool here and then select H. And then I'm going to go ahead and click play there. I'm going to reset. Uh, I'll click the location again and select I and then push play on this one. All right, so there you go. So you can see that it works and that we're going to go ahead and uh, create that from scratch. So here I am. I went to a new uh, VR and I went file uh, new blocks project. And here I am with a brand new blocks project. The very first thing that I'm going to do is go to the drivetrain and select the drive velocity and the turn velocity. I'm a little bit impatient, so I'm going to make it 100%. Then I'm going to go to the looks area and I'm going to immediately drop the pen. So I'm going to set the pen color or uh, move robot pen down. And why don't we set the pen color? Why not? Let's change the pen color to uh, blue. Let's do these in blue today. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and select this first shape right here. Now, uh, I can tell you that I just did a little bit of trial and error for figuring out the lengths of those shapes. And this first one, uh, through trial and error, I figured out is 189 but I'm gonna go ahead and just double check that. I'm gonna make it drive forward for 189. And then as you've seen me do in the last couple videos, I'll make it drive in reverse also, just so that I can get the robot out of the way to see if it got the whole way. So yeah, 189 seems to be the exact amount that it needs to drive. Now, this is a pattern and it's a little bit trickier than say like a square. A square is, you know, drive forward, turn right, and then do that four times. I can see that there's symmetry here on the, on both the X and the Y axis. And if there's symmetry on the X and the Y axis, in this case, because it's a square like object, I was pretty sure when I started that I could do this as a, some kind of repeat four times. At first, I thought maybe I could get it to repeat like eight times, but because of the right, it's a forward and then right, a forward and then left, a forward and then right. So it's a right, left, right, and it needs to go in that order. So if I go forward and then turn right 90, I'm going to duplicate this and then turn left and then I'll duplicate this and then turn right. That should leave me right facing, notice how I'm facing uh, this way at the beginning of this like leg. That should leave me facing this way at the beginning of that leg. So I'm gonna reset and push play. And sure enough, there I am. And if I do that one more time, another time, and another time, so four times, that gets me all the way around in that shape. So now all I have to do is go down to control, select repeat, put in a four, and I'm good to go. Okay, so just that easy, really. That shape looks, I think, a lot more intimidating than it actually is. I'm gonna tell you the, the next shape was actually a little bit harder for me just because I had to figure out the um, 
the angle and then the distance here. Um, again, I had to use a bit of trial and error. I'm pretty sure that it's about 200. So again, I'll do 200, duplicate this, have it go in reverse just to double check. And let's play. And sure enough, it's pretty close. It might be a little, little shy of 200, um, but let's give it a shot at 200. Okay, and it was the same thing with the angle. I'm thinking 120 degrees. So let's give that a shot. Turn right 120. And then I need it to go forward for at least a little bit to get it, again, get it out of the way so I can see it. I'll refresh and do that. Yep, it's a 120 degree angle. And then again, like I said, the distance there just it was trial and error. All right, so 675. Now the cool thing about this is if you think about it, it is like, again, like kind of like a square, um, but this angle right here, 60 degrees, I think. Let's find out. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this. Oh, yeah, just do that, 60 degrees. Let's see, hopefully I'm facing the right direction. Yep. Okay, and the reason that I realized it was 60 degrees is because when I was over here and I was pointing forward and I turned 120 degrees, if I wanted to have my robot completely turned around where I am now, then that would be 180 degrees, but I only went 120. So the difference between 120 and 180 is 60. So that's what told me that. At this point, I know that I could just repeat this exact same action so these the steps that I did, so go forward, turn 120, go forward, turn 60. If I do that, go forward for 200, turn 120, and go 60. So then I just got to repeat this twice. So I'll take the repeat, wrap it around that, say two, and then reset and go. There we go. Ta-da. <laughs> that one's pretty easy. But again, it was the trial and error that of getting those distances that really took me the time. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. So that is I. And now this one looks like I could get away with, say, repeating something four times, but not quite. <laughs> And now this one I can definitely use uh, the Pythagorean, um, the Pythagorean theorem here to figure out the distance of uh, this. Uh, this, if this is a right triangle, which uh, it is, then the distance from here down to here uh, is the hypotenuse, and so I can figure that out. So I'll just do a little bit of math. Uh, the first thing I need to do is figure out the distance here. But I figured out that if these were about 200, 246, and I'm thinking that's about 600, probably a little less. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try that. And that is too much. I'm gonna say, cause it looks like the pink line goes to about there. I'm gonna say that it's 525. 525. 525, I feel alive, wearing my hat today. All right, there we go, perfect. Okay, so now this is a, it looks like it is a right triangle just like what we have up there. You know, it might even be, I wonder if it's even the exact same, be interesting. Um, but since it's a right triangle just like up there, I'm pretty sure that this interior angle is 45 degrees and so, if uh, I want to do the outside part of that, um, then I could simply, oh, whoops, I can simply do uh, some math here, and I could say uh, 180 minus 45 gives me 135. So I'll turn 
right for 135. Go back to the drivetrain here and say turn right for 135. Now the distance that I'm going to travel uh, along that hypotenuse is going to be the 525 basically squared and all that stuff, all that good stuff, right? So if you watched the first video on triangles, this was pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, I'm going to say drive forward and the amount that I'm going to have it drive forward, I'm going to do a bunch of math on that. So if I go under operations and I'm going to say the square root of so right here, square root of the product of two squares, basically, right? So add, and then the square root. There's no square root here, or square here, so I'll just do times and times. So 525 times 525, duplicate that. Okay, so that's like leg A and B. So A squared or C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. All right, let's see. I'll reset and go. And right on. So now I need to make a left. Uh, now making a left, if I turned right 135 to get facing this direction, so I just need to turn left 135, just go right back facing, you know, north again, right? So this time I'm going to turn left. And so I can't repeat yet. I definitely see symmetry there. So I know that I'm going to be able to repeat something, but just not yet 135. Okay. And so now I'll be facing up, right? If I'm facing forward, I'll just go ahead and do that so I can visualize it. If I'm facing forward. So I went forward, turned right, forward, turned left, forward, turn right, forward, and then turning left is moot. But at this point I could repeat. So I'm, I'm, well, you know what? I went forward and turned right. Now I need to go forward and turn left. So you know what? I don't think I can repeat anything. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this whole stack here. Go like that because I'm going to go forward and turn right, forward and turn left. Then forward and turn left. And then forward and I don't need this one, but I'll turn right so that I'm facing the same direction that I was. So th this is where this one kind of tripped me up. I thought, hey, I see symmetry. I could, I should be able to just repeat something, right? But my rights and lefts are flipped. Now there's probably something I could do with that. In this code with variables and whether it's the first iteration of the loop, make them rights, second iteration of the loop, make them lefts. Uh, that's probably something that would be more elegant to do in Python and reducing the number of lines of code. And so that's coming down the pike for a later video uh, when we explore uh, some of the benefits of converting your code to Python and learning a little bit of text-based uh, programming so that you can do some more advanced stuff. But that's gonna be it for this video. I really appreciate everybody tuning in. This was part three of the Shape Tracer. We're gonna be doing uh, more videos on playgrounds as they come out. And uh, I just, I really enjoy doing it. Please make sure to leave a comment down below if you have questions, uh, leave a like. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please consider a subscribe. All right, thank you so much. Have a good one.